Now, when I uh, when I uh, ask, I've known uh, Lee Sally since grade school days. We rode on a school bus together uh, to ship in Ship um, But I ask for some. What what shall I say about you? And it, interestingly, they sent me some geographic information, and this whole. Uh, their talk is going to be take us kind of around the world. So, but anyway, Sally uh, grew up in that, I always call it internationally famous town of Shipshawana uh, and, and, and was there until she began fifth grade when the family moved to Goshen. Actually, her father was the principal of the Shipshawana, was it called just Shipshawana schools? It was grades one through 12. And her mother taught there. Uh, she, but they moved to Goshen, and I think your father joined the faculty at that point here at the college. And uh, Ron uh, grew up in Virginia and Alaska, and then moved to Goshen in when he was ready to begin seventh grade. They actually met at Goshen High School, uh, and married uh, later when they were here at Goshen College. Uh, they moved to, well, after grad school, moved back to Goshen in 1976, you told me this, this morning. morning. Ron taught 33 years in the uh, teaching mathematics at Goshen at the college, and uh, Sally Jo was a librarian, 25 years. But they retired long ago in uh, 2009. So I've had a, a rich uh, time of uh, international uh, experiences since since that time. Another thing they didn't add, but it's a personal connection I have, and that's important, is um, they they were part of a bicycling group, and I think one of their daughters gave us our name. Was it you, Andre? Okay. Anyway, it's old spokes and. <laughs> For years, I really didn't like the name, and I didn't tell anybody I was part of Old Spokes, but eventually I kind of embraced it. <laughs> it's really, I'm really looking forward to the reflections you're going to give us this morning. Well, here we are. Since retirement in 2009, we have taken on a number of short assignments with MCC. But our relationship with MCC began much earlier and needs to be part of that story. Overview of our assignments with MCC. Uh, we've had 13 assignments over 56 years. Um, Resident in eight countries, totaling about 11 and a half years. These assignments occurred before, during, and after our time with Goshen College. Uh, the early years focused on our roles as educators, and the later years uh, focused more on administration. Um, we show you this timeline because there was a definite interaction between our experiences on SST with Goshen College and our MCC assignments, and we will say more about this as we go along. The lines on this um, slide uh, delineate the time before Goshen College and the time after retiring. So the section in between those lines, we were, we were both employed with Goshen College. Mm. Uh, and it also shows a little bit of the interaction between our MCC assignments and our Goshen College SST assignments. This continues that list. Okay, this is an overview of, uh, of the places where we have worked and lived in Africa. First in Kenya and then in Malawi, and then twice with Goshen College in West Africa, Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal. And then uh, after our retirement, we were in Uganda for a little over a year. And most recently we worked with Chad 
uh, as uh, interim country agents for MCC for Chad. I colored that one differently because we did not actually live there. That was during COVID, and we did most of that assignment from Goshen uh, using Zoom, but we were able to go to Chad for three weeks. When we graduated from college, we joined MCC with the Teachers Abroad program. It was probably the best decision we made of our life, the well, second best. First was to get married. <laughs> our experiences changed our lives. It gave us an introduction and sparked our interest in other cultures, other religions, other people, and a sense of wanting to use our skills and abilities to do what we could to help others. You will notice in the picture on the right, Mon and Winnie Yordi are on when at the same time that we did. <laughs> we're headed to Nigeria. On the second row to the right. Eventually, we chose our professions through our experiences. We spent those first three years with MCC in Kenya teaching at a teacher's training college. What an eye opener for me my insular LaGrange and Elkhart County experiences. We worked with colleagues of other faiths and no faith, Africans and Europeans. We learned to know students from all over Kenya, sometimes visiting them in their homes. I learned that stopping to greet someone was more important than getting to an appointment on time. And it's not just a passing hi. <laughs> We arrived in Kenya just four years after the country had become independent, and MCC was responding to a teacher shortage. Our teaching staff was about two-thirds European, European included English, Irish, and Americans, and about one-third African. Uh, by the time we left, three years later, those ratios had been reversed, and you can sort of see that in these two photos. <laughs> We were placed at Missouri Teachers College, preparing teachers for primary, that's elementary schools, because Sally Jo had a degree in elementary education. I was assigned to teach mainly math and science to students who had, at most, two years of high school um, previously. With no experience, I benefited from an excellent British mentor and in the process discovered that I, in fact, enjoyed teaching. <laughs> After three years in grad school, we were ready for a change and asked MCC if there was another opening for us in Africa. We worked in Malawi. Whoops. I think we missed something. You missed something? Thanks. <laughs> I should have said here. Uh, and in addition to our European colleagues, we got to know many of our Kenyan students and colleagues and uh, staff. And we were privileged to visit many of them in their home areas. The one on the left is a student, and the one on the right is a colleague. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so after three years of grad school at MSU, we were ready for a change. And we asked MCC if there was another opening for us in Africa. We wanted to go back. We worked in Malawi for three years, again with TAP. Ron was at a secondary school teaching math and science. I worked in the seminary as a secretary, an English teacher, the choir director, and a librarian. <laughs> it was here that I determined that I wanted to be a librarian. During those six years in Kenya and Malawi, we often felt that we were learning more than contributing. In addition to personal relationships, we gained much insight into African culture and in its interaction with colonialism while reading African writers. Ron joined the Goshen College faculty in 76. Our previous international experience was one of the factors that led to our being appointed to, as SST leaders in Haiti. After further graduate work and a sabbatical year in England, this led to other SST assignments. 
that includes Cote d'Ivoire in 1995 and then Indonesia in 2001. In 2005, we were due for a sabbatical from Goshen and wrote to MCC to see whether there might be any options for us to return to East Africa. They replied that there were not. However, seeing our past time in Indonesia with Goshen College, would we be interested in an assignment in Indonesia? The specific assignment was in Papua, which is way over the eastern end, part of the New Guinea Island. That specific assignment in Papua, was in Papua, and during our year there, we discovered that in many ways, Papua was more like Africa than like the rest of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. We were assigned to the education department to work with their docent or teaching faculty who were preparing future teachers for both primary and secondary mm -hmm. schools. I focused on mathematics teaching methods and Sally Jo organized, computerized, and trained others in the use of the departmental library. The sabbatical year in Indonesia led to our... Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Albertino was an MCC IVEP person, a young adult exchange volunteer who lived and worked in Goshen for, uh, for a year in the 1990s. You may remember him. He worked at the college and lived with Glenn Gilbert. Albertina was very thankful for his year in the States and wanted to give back to his community in Papua. He had a dream of having a small library for neighborhood children who could come, read, and borrow books. He wrote proposals and got some grant money from MCC and other organizations. He built a small room onto his house and bought some books. He asked if I could teach the volunteers how to organize and run a small library. One Saturday, I ran a workshop for four or five volunteers. They learned a very simplified Dewey Decimal System for organizing books and a simple way for loans and returns. By the time we left, Albertino and his crew had a small library running with neighborhood children excited to come. This was in 2006. In 2008, Ron and I returned to Indonesia for several months as interim MCC reps. And during that time, visited MC Pro MCC projects in Papua. I went to see this library. It was busy. One of the volunteers I trained was so enthused with the idea that she started a community library in her home 18 miles away. Again, in 2015, I returned to Indonesia for another stint as interim MCC reps. Again, we made a trip to Papua to visit MCC projects. This time, I visited the second library, which had greatly expanded. They had moved to a large building and were running Saturday programs for children. What a joy to see a small thing grow. We visited Banda Aceh um, at the western end of Indonesia in 2006, just two months after the tsunami that wiped out a third of their population. 100,000 lives were lost in that city out of 300,000. And we returned in 2008 for closing ceremonies after MCC had completed its part in the large-scale relief and rebuilding effort. Uh, the photos on the left side here were just after the tsunami hit that city. And the one on the right is a school uh, two and a half years later that was rebuilt with MCC support. So that sabbatical year in Indonesia led to our being asked to fill in for the country reps for three months in the summer of 2008. And then shortly after our retirement, we took on a 15 month assignment as interim reps in Uganda that took us back to East Africa. It was the first time that we became fully engaged in program administration that included annual planning, budgeting, and reporting, as well as supervising and relating to personnel and partner organizations. There was a lot to learn, but it was also very rewarding. MCC activities in Uganda at that time included education, 
health, food security, and peace education. The photo on the left is uh, a doctor at Rengo Hospital where they had a program going to help people with AIDS. And the one on the right is an education support up in a remote northern part of the country for a, a small ethnic group up there. It's also worked with women. <laughs> when Susan from Uganda spent a year living in British Columbia with IPEL, she didn't know that it would affect the lives of dozens of women back home. She was assigned to British Columbia through the MPP's IBEP. She worked as a support worker with LARCH, an international organization that serves people with disabilities. It was a very different experience from that of her home, where she was a teacher. But it was an experience she thoroughly enjoyed. As part of her time in BC, she also spent time in Abbotsford in the, at the MCC quilting where volunteer quilters taught her how to put together simple quilts made from recycled clothing and scrap fabric. One of her dreams was to take this skill home to the women in her village. She began a club at her church in Western Uganda, whose purpose was to support women as they care for their families and orphans. As she says, it's the women who make sure that the children go to school pay the fees, clothing, and feeding them while all the time keeping their own home. The club is called God is Great, and its main mission is to help women be role models in peace building and develop practical skills through handwork, like the making of books, as well as weaving mats and embroidery. The women also support each other in their gardens, helping each other grow food and <laughs> to enable them to feed their families. The women contribute what they are able, most contributing about 500 shillings, 20 cents a week, each week to buy materials to make the blankets. The women have been eager to learn and now want to share those skills with women in sister churches in neighboring parishes. From there, the plan was to sell blankets to make money to help the children go to school. Susan sees this as the peacemaking part of, the com of her project. She says, one cause of conflict between people in this area is lack of education, which leads to lack of work. It causes tension between tribes and they fight over land. By bringing women to from different tribes together to help each other towards the common goal of educating and caring for their children, Susan hopes they can foster stronger, peaceful relations with each other. Um, the one on the left is uh, yeah, this women's group, God is Great, uh, making quotes together. The actually the other one is actually uh, women in Bangladesh making saris from recycled uh, making blankets from recycled saris. Our time in Uganda unveiled a need to clean out old country files <laughs> and save some for archiving. And so we had two assignments with MCC to go back to uh, the world to do that. Through these two assignments, we were privileged to share a few weeks of serving MCC offices and personal personnel in a couple in a, some additional countries. So in 2014, we were back in East Africa for six weeks uh, in Uganda, Tanzania, and Ethiopia. And in 2015, we were in Southeast Asia doing the same job of going through old country files in Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. <laughs> Uh, this led to further short assignments as interim country reps, uh, two to seven months at most, mostly in Asia. So these are the countries we've been in in, in Asia. Uh, as you can see, we've actually lived in Indonesia five times, three times at MCC and twice with uh, Goshen College. Uh, but we've also been in Laos for um, only two months, Bangladesh seven months, South Korea for five months. In Laos, the majority of the office staff were Buddhist. 
uh, who were enthusiastic about MCC and its mission. We enjoyed relating to them, sharing their traditions, as well as personal joys and challenges during our weekly gatherings. The picture on the left was actually a farewell ceremony um, called a bachi in Laos. And on the right, we're helping to orient young people for a, uh, their year abroad in another country. We have participated in the MCC Visitor Exchange programs in a number of different ways. Orienting young people and their parents in their own countries, hosting IVEPers here in Goshen, relating to Salters from U.S. and Canada in their assignment locations, sending one of our daughters to her SALT location, one of our observations was that the personal and social needs of Salters are very similar to the social needs of GC students we should, on SST. We, sorry. <laughs> we should say that uh, IVEP is the uh, International Visitor Exchange Program that brings people from other countries to North America, to uh, U.S. and Canada. SALT is uh, the program, a similar program that takes North American young people to other countries. Uh, and there's another program referred to as Yaman, which is done by MCC together with um, Mennonite World Conference that uh, helps young people go for a year in other from other countries to other countries, not North America. Uh, so, in fact, in this picture on the left, we were sending uh, Indonesians. This is their departure from the, um, the airport. This group of Indonesian young people were headed, most of them, to North America, to Canada and the U.S., but one was headed to Brazil, and one was headed to Egypt. And on the right, we have a young woman in the middle who uh, was preparing. This was in Bangladesh, and we were meeting with her family before she departed for an assignment for a year in Nigeria. I just see a further thought on that last picture. This is one of the places where it was helpful for us to have sent our oldest daughter on salt. Because this mother did not want her child to go. But we were able as parents to say, you know, it's all right. She'll come back. <laughs> she did, in fact, have a, a, a great time in Nigeria. And she's very enthusiastic herself about that program. Damn here. We've been privileged to have a number of encounters with Islam both in Asia and in Africa. In Bangladesh, 85% of our office staff were Muslim, and we shared weekly prayer times with them in our office. In Indonesia, Cote d'Ivoire, and Senegal, we, along with our Goshen College students, visited mosques and had good conversations with lecturers and religious leaders. And we have been present for Muslim holidays and, obs and have observed a wide variety in Islamic beliefs and practices. MCC is involved in food and economic security in a number of locations worldwide. The largest project that we were involved with was in, in Bangladesh. Bangladesh. This is a, a testimonial written by one of our staff members in Bangladesh about a, a project participant. Vegetables are one of the most important cash crops for the farmers of Bogra district in Bangladesh. Mohammed Shahildun Islam, who is 28, is a farmer. He had completed his studies in economics, and after graduation, he tried to get a job. But in Bangladesh, it's very difficult to get a job. He started to grow vegetables on his father's land. As a literate person, he thought he would do better than other farmers. But the soil quality was poor. He followed his father's te techniques and started to use a lot of chemical fertilizer and pesticides on his land for more production. This further pre depleted the soil quality and nutrients and lowered the crop yield. In the meantime, he got married and became father of a daughter, but he was not happy with his income and was frustrated. He was looking for solutions to his pro problem. In 2015, 
He was selected as one of 500 participants of a project with MCC Bangladesh, uh, with the MCC Bangladesh partner, GUP. Under the, this project, he received training in integrated pest management techniques and safe production. He tested the soil of his land. After that, he applied the fertilizer according to the nutrient status of the soil. He produced treacle compost near his house and used that on his land. He used sex pheromone traps, bait traps, sticky traps, neem and mahogany seed extract on the land as an alternative to pesticides. <laughs> he also practiced wrapping gourd fruit with thin polythene bag during early growth to control fruit flies. All the efforts gradually improved soil quality and reduced the cost of production. His, he increased his yield and earned more income. He's now a happy farmer. <laughs> his daughter started school. In Korea, MCC supports several projects related to building trust and peace in the region. This comes out of a history and lingering trauma related to conflicts with Japan and with North Korea. The peace building near Seoul, which is pictured on the right, is run by Jay Young Lee and Karen Joy Spiker. Peace building, in quotes, is the name of their building, their community, and their program. MCC has also supplied food and medical aid to North Korea in the past, but in 2020, that became impossible due to COVID. In our most recent assignments, as internal country reps, was for Chad, most of it done through Zoom because of COVID. But we were able to go to the country for three weeks after we got our first vaccinations. During that time, we visited two refugee camps. The refugees were Chadian, whose parents or grandparents had fled Chad to escape conflict and gone to the Central Africa Republic many years ago. The CAR was now in conflict and sending, the country was sending them back to Chad. Some of these refugees had never lived in Chad and most had no place to go. In one camp, MCC is partnering with another NGO to provide funding for latrines. One woman reported that there were very few latrines and she would often have to walk a long distance and then wait in a long line to use one. In another camp, um, we met some, uh, some young women and girls who had received MCC hygiene kits. They related how this had helped them go and stay in school. Menstruation does not stop in an emergency. In emergencies, focus is put on food and essential. The other essentials. So often, women and girls get their periods. They have no option but to isolate themselves. The constant interruption of girls' lives has a huge impact on their schooling. It is estimated that girls without access to sanitary pads miss an average of three months each year. This means many girls fall behind in their studies and need to drop out, which often leads to early marriage and having children while still very young. <laughs> In all of these assignments, we have experienced some, some challenges and many joys. We'll just list a few. Some of the challenges, different country situations and offices. Each, each location is unique and presents its own challenges. Uh, being placed in these assignments for a short time also is a challenge. Um, that you don't face as I mean, you have challenges when you're there for five years, but when you're there for just a few months, it is more of a challenge, I would say. Language, um, we can function, um, we're not fluent, we can function in French and in Indonesian, but when you're in other countries like Bangladesh and Laos, um, 
we, d we did not have enough time to learn those languages, even though we did learn some readings. Um, and we relied heavily on our office staff and translators to, uh, to translate for us. In Chad, it was interesting. Um, even though we could get along in French, we, when we met in that circle that you saw us in uh, under the tree, um, it was more comfortable for us to speak in English. So our office staff member would translate to French. And then another translator would translate the French into the local language. So we were going through two translators at that point. Uh, or, sorry, but, uh, a lot of joys. We gained an appreciation over these years. We gained an appreciation for a wide variety of human cultures. Uh, also a wide variety of religious perspectives and expression. The work of Mennonite Central Committee. And a huge amount of goodwill in the world. Uh, uh, sort of where, where we are. These are a few pictures uh, from the of our staff and co-workers in the various countries. Up at the top is Kenya, Malawi, uh, Indonesia. Again, Indonesia, Uganda staff uh, signed in, uh, in Laos. That would be uh, sharing a meal in Laos. <clears throat> Back to Indonesia, Bangladesh, Korea, and Chad. And uh, we'll finish with this uh, saying that is a motto on the wall in the peace building in Korea. New justice, seeking peace, building community together. That's what we had to say, I think, unless there are questions or comments. Yeah. Hi. Forgot one of the important parts of the opening, which is to introduce visitors, and and so uh, I know at least one visitor who's here, Andrea. Uh, Andrea Milne is the youngest daughter of Ron and Sally Joe. So welcome, Maybe everybody can see you and know who you are. She lives here in Goshen. And Andrea was with us on at least one of our uh, SST assignments, but I don't think she was on any of our MCC assignments. I visited in Uganda. You visited us in Uganda. And okay, that was going to be one of my questions. Uh, yeah. Like, do you people have children? And which I know the answer to, but how do they fit into all of this? Okay. No, I have, uh, yes, we have three daughters. <laughs> the oldest was with us at, as a three to five year old in Malawi. <laughs> and I think that's the only time she was, no, she was with us in Haiti also. Yes. In Haiti SST, our oldest and our middle daughter, our middle daughter was nine months old in Haiti. Um, and then Andrea and our, our Jessica, our middle daughter, were with us in Cote d'Ivoire, and they were, uh, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. we, we didn't mention the sabbatical year in England, which was also another whole story uh, and culture. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea and Jessica were with us there. Where were you in England? Excuse me? Where were you in? We were in Nottingham for a year. Uh, as a visitor at the university there, I was in Sally Joe. Uh, worked, had, in, worked in the library. Worked in the library there. In the middle of the country. <laughs> I don't know what kind of statistics MCC keeps, but are you the record holders for? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know MCC yeah. very well. But I'm guessing you are <laughs> for the record holders. For number of assignments, it, possibly. Not for, not, for, not no, for length of time, I'm sure. No. Yeah. But but for but, but uh, covering the length of length of time from 56 oh. years. <laughs> yeah. That that probably not maybe that's record, but but more people have spent longer time yeah. directly but, in a particular and, place. And long-term country representatives for MCC are expected to stay five years at a time, at least. Uh, so many of those people have 
have spent considerable portions of their working time, working lives uh, on, a, on MCC assignments. Are you planning to do any more? <laughs> um, probably not. <laughs> Uh, we didn't say anything about the, the recent assignment that we just said no to, but um, for the well, last two years, we were sort of um, resource, people. Resource, yeah, resource people to new MCC reps. Uh, so we spent about two years. We worked with, you know, we worked with Chad, the new ones in Chad. Um, we, spent, we spent some time with John and Sandra Lapp, actually, before they went to Egypt. Oh, yeah. But we recently said, you're getting too many new technologies. We don't want to learn it. Well, younger people. A large part, um, when we were in Uganda, we learned MCC systems, which is a whole <laughs> record keeping and evaluating and all that stuff. And that's all going under change these days. And it's it, for us, it's beginning to be too much to keep up with. So uh, the point where we really aren't in the know anymore as we were at one point. That makes it hard to be resource people to new reps. Uh, so we're, we're kind of pulling out of that. Is there one country that kind of stands out as your favorite place? <laughs> We fell in love with East Africa from the start, but uh, but we've spent so much time in Indonesia that that's also a, a very big highlight. And we've known Indonesia both from Goshen College and also MCC. We've known in, we've known Indonesian students here on campus. We've met their families when we were in Indonesia. So there is a big connection to Indonesia for us. We had our second son Neil as an SST. We did. Yes, we had Neil as an SST -er. in Haiti. Christy are just finishing up three long terms with MCC. Right. What is it about East Africa that you fell in love with? Well, it was our first assignment, you know. <laughs> I, I, our first love. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was just going to say, I think it was just because it was the first time we had been overseas, had learned to know other people. They're so friendly. And friendly people, um, beautiful country. We lived at high altitude. The climate was wonderful. Uh, we had lots of exciting adventures along with our assignments at school. So, yeah. Our, our claim to fame in East Africa was at age 21 or so. We climbed the tallest mountain in Africa. So. <laughs> I'm just going to ask that. <laughs> we did. Your, your, your last point that there's so much good in the world, mm. people that you've met and experienced. Uh, it reminds me that from small seeds, fruit grows, and you certainly have been the tenders and the carers that have made a difference here and there everywhere through people who have taken the the goodness into their own lives and relationships it's just been wonderful to see how things grow yeah when we were in uganda in 2011 2012 we um we were able to go back and visit our school in kenya at one point and it was interesting um it has expanded. It is totally African um, these days. Um, the, the teaching staff are, are completely Kenyan. Um, they had a few more buildings than when we were there. They now have a computer lab that, of course, didn't exist when we were there in the 60s. Um, and they had. we happened to arrive there on a day that they had cleaned up the whole campus because it was a graduation time. And so they gave us a nice tour of the school and you were interested, especially in the library, so we went to see their library. And it was looking spick and span, nice. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah, so we and, commented on that. You and Sean. And, and I, you know, I said, those are you know, really nice books. Oh, look at old. So I was looking at some of them. Their most recent encyclopedia set 
was the set that I had given to the library in 68, 40 years earlier. Pretty sad. Mm. Well, and, and they said the problem is they don't have the funds to buy, to, to keep their library up to date. So that's... Well, they can that's really everything on their phone. Yeah, the library is down. You know, there's... Uh, 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 you work in Telejo with uh, libraries, in libraries, and see the importance of it, apparently. Uh, but it's a place where you're supposed to be so quiet. Oh, no. I wonder if you'd give a shout out for libraries. <laughs> Here's your opportunity. Tell us what. Well, you can find anything you want in the library. Anything I want in a library. Yeah, just ask the librarian. <laughs> There were lots of it. <laughs> I just finished a Japanese, I think it's Japanese, yeah, novel. Everything you need is in the library. <laughs> I love it. It's on this one. Thank you so much. This has been it. Thank you for letting us reminisce. Yeah. <laughs>